So, the current state of affairs is that Lola has been promised sanctuary by the druid who has been reported to you as to be a trustworthy and respectable individual. He has assured you that Lola will be will be cared for and given a warm, uh, soft place to sleep, warm bed, or warm meal, and basically just looked after in general. The group of you have been charged, or not charged with, but you've been told that there is a potential incursion of lizard folk soldiers, and basically this this village needs every hand that it can get to help it, help itself out in its defense. And you've learned about artifacts that date back to the origin of the kingdom, which may have the power to, in fact, help Lola. All these things being considered and being said, the party is now left to trying to decide what its next course of action will be. I'll turn to the party. What you want to do? Do you think they need help defending the the grove? I don't know. Let's ask them. I mean, turn they to did the... say that they were outnumbered severely. Well, turn to the druid. The druid is not there. The Currently, dru- who's with you right now is, aside from the group of you, there is Urun, there is Arari, and there is Peleus, the, El- uh, the forge master. My understanding, Mrs. Honos, was that quite a number of people had been taken from this town. I think we should go find them. And I look to uh, Mendardus and uh, what's Drax's character's name? Theon. Theon. So I, I, you two were looking for for people as well, correct? Yes. Uh, I'm not. Sorry, I'm mi- mi- mixing up. Look, not every elf and half elf, just because they look similar, <laughs> doesn't mean that they're exactly the same people. Shouldn't make generalizations like that. I haven't been, I haven't been around elves in a long time. No worries. No. I, 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 I uh, reach, reach into my pocket and finger something. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Arari speaks up. Does your, does your character secretly have a vagina? <laughs> Is that jeez. what you're fingering in your oh, pocket? Jeez. Probably has a knife up there or something. Um, so at this point, Arari speaks up. I'm pretty curious about this hag you spoke of. You said she was living in the forest? Yeah. What was she doing there? I don't know. We killed her. Well, you, Dying, okay, I you guess? killed her, and what? Then you just <clears throat> you just left? Come well, on, then you had to have learned something. So when we walked in, right uh-huh. in a corner, there was a cage which held our good friend Arun. He who, kind of clears his throat at that moment. Who is much bigger than he appears to be? Trust me on that. <laughs> he snickers uh, at the comment. In another corner, there is a cauldron of something that stupid over here was playing around with with his mage hand. No, I don't think he mage handed it. He just he shot no. firebolts at it. Yeah, I was trying to shoot firebolts well, at whatever it. Whatever he was doing over. to it, I can't remember. I drank out of my wine skin a bit before the battle. <laughs> And, uh, she was ugly as hell and spit acid at me. Arari listens to the, like, takes in the whole story, kind of has her hands on her hips. Well, if what you say is true, she kind of looks you up and down. And I'm inclined to believe you. The hag was also disguised as Wait, somebody else when we first looked, arrived. She looked me up and down? She did. She looked you up and down, trying to did basically look, size you up. Did she look like she liked it? Uh, she, she looked less like she was checking you out and more like she wanted to verify if you were lying well, to her. Well, anyway, on the way up, a wink. Are when you... She my, when, she, when we meet eye to eye, a wink. 
the the wink is noticed on her part. Uh, Theon, you were saying something. <clears throat> the hag was also not disguised as a hag, or rather appearing as a hag when we first arrived. She appeared as a younger lady, elvish form, with silver hair. There was a cauldron in the corner, filled with some god-awful liquid that she got really pissed off at us for even messing with it, or perhaps trying to spill it. You messing with people's experiments again, Theon? That I was? They kept us alive. And you don't hear me complaining. Hmm. Disguised. Disguised as an elf. Do you recognize her? Do you know where she was from? Uh, from the wouldn't. clan of Ugly in the town of Awful. Actually, she appeared as a beautiful woman, if what HPG was describing was correct in each yes, of our she opinions. Yes, she was, she was quite, a, uh, quite a pretty elf in her disguise. And I don't think any of us recognized her, right? Um, no, I think... Uh, I'd have to go back and check, but I believe Mindardis and... I don't think Morris did, but I think Mindardis uh, recognized her as someone who testified against the party during the trial. And she claims that she saw Pedwin burn down, or at least attempt to burn down the crossroads before fleeing the scene. It's going to prove nothing. Um, it would. Um, is that place that she testified in? Is that in Mason's Rest by any chance? The courthouse? Yes, it's in Mason's Rest. Ah. Seems well, like she's been all that. over these islands. There's got to be maybe a record. Did she find have any possessions that weren't crushed? I or do burned. have several books in my possession that I had stole, and we also have a couple pouches filled with uh, gems. Oh, let's see. We also have some gold, but if you plan on getting your hands on it, <laughs> you're going to have to go through me. Nah, keep your gold. Let me see the books. I hand her the books. She begins thumbing through some of the pages, and you can see what what she has is... A collection of, of rather old and dingy and dirty um, what appear to be diaries and as she opens the first one she it seems startled for a moment because on the inside is actually not a book it's designed to look like a book would but the inside has been hollowed out and sitting in the center is a silver mirror oh didn't expect that mirror, Here, hold this. mirror in the book and she basically just, she's not even looking at you, she just sticks it out in the direction of Honos, and just holds the mirror out. I take Hang the mirror. This. Thank you. And then she begins flipping through some of the other books. Ooh. Sylvan, huh? And she, she begins passing through some of the notes. Occasionally there's a scrolled diagram, um... Morris make uh, actually Morris and Honos make perception checks. Who and who? What? Morris and Honos. Oh, oh I appear to have gone blind. Is this a side effect from your silencing spell? What? No, blindness is something different. Uh oh. Uh, Honos, as you are holding the mirror, you're looking up and down, and it's it's a hand mirror. It's got a, a small handle, and it, the frame of the mirror kind of wraps around. Um, it's not an oval. It's kind of like... Here, let me just draw it. So it's kind of like this. Why are you drawing this? So the mirror looks kind of like that. By the eye. Yeah, I see it. The whispering eye. It looks like a harp. 
Well, that, that's what like the surface of the mirror looks like, and the yeah. the handle itself kind of extends around it, like this. So it's kind of like that, and in, in all its design. The looking glass. Yeah, it's basically that. <clears throat> Oh crap, I can't select that thing now. Okay, well, I'll get rid of that later. Anyway, um so as she's flipping through them, these aren't just any kind of sylvan. These they don't make any sense. Uh I think they're Yes. Yes, I think they're encoded, but I I can't figure it out right now. I'd have to work at it a little bit. Um, I'm pretty good at puzzles. Okay, do you want to help me with this? Sure. All right, you, you're you going to help me later. Oh. But this will take a day or two. Um, tell you what, you come and see me in a couple of days, I'll probably have at least one or two of these done by then. They aren't, could I hang on to this? Are you okay with that? Um. Yes. Okay. I'll Absolutely. hang on to this one. You, and she turns back to you, Honos. You keep a hold of that thing. Uh, Honos, Any you're particular actually... reason why? I mean, I could hang on to it if you want. Uh, Honos, as you're looking at it, the, <laughs> the mirror itself is is made of quite finely wrought silver. It's not very big, but... The, the handles themselves have uh, have embossments and engravings, and it's not just it's not just worked silver. It's it has like ex, uh, accents and things like that on it. Are um, there any kind of runes and or languages or script on this mirror? Make a perception check. Uh, Honos, as you are manipulating the mirror, <laughs> there are. Absolutely nothing. I don't even see myself in that damn thing. <laughs> so, uh, Honos, as you're... Uh, Theon, you don't see anything remarkable or special about the mirror. It looks like a, a nice but mundane mirror. Honos, as you're interacting with this, the mirror itself, the surface of it, as you stare at it for a little while, it seems to almost shimmer a little bit. Almost as if it's not solid anymore. And as you continue to look at it, it begins to darken. I, th I, uh, I think of uh, my my apprentice. Does anything happen? You begin to see a very vague outline of a human being bound and kept in a, a dark, dark cave. Very little light. You can hear what sounds very muted and very faint, but is just kind of a heavy <sighs> and just otherwise labored breathing. But aside from that, you you can't make out much. It's it's very indistinct. But as you're as you're seeing this, you realize that this vision is actually filling your entire field of vision. You don't see the grove where you were previously standing anymore. You simply see this indistinct, fuzzy shape. As you look around, you see to your right, well, in fact, everything around you is just, is now been kind of replaced with a black and empty space or a Can void. Can we see Honos? All, you look over at Honos, you just see him staring unblinkingly yeah. into the mirror. Okay, so he's still there. He, he's still there, yeah. <clears throat> you, you just see him staring in a mirror. Uh, Honos, you see this. To your right is a very large, Eyeball. Just looks exactly like an eyeball. How big is it? Um, it's about a meter in diameter. Oh boy. And it's floating in the air, maybe a little over half its distance off the ground, or half its uh, radius off the ground. So it's, it's just kind of hovering a little bit above the ground, but it's, it's a great big eyeball. To your left is what appears to be a lizard-like eye, but it's made out of bluish-gray clouds and smoke. The pupil on it is vertically oriented, and like a lizard, it, it's 
Uh, it, it's just got a very long, vertically oriented slit. Make a perception check. His character always sees. You don't see anything, but you hear something. You hear what sounds, again, like like breathing, but this isn't what you heard before. This is something raspy. This is something ragged. It, it, it's a different creature from what you were getting a sense of when you first peered into the mirror. And as you spin around 180 degrees, there are two very, very fuzzy points of light. More distant than anything else that you've seen in this place. Just floating off in the distance. I try and concentrate and uh, put down the mirror. You breathe out and close your eyes momentarily. And when you open them up again, you're staring at a mirror, standing <coughs> in a grove. I sigh and smile and put down the mirror. Arari is, who's been flipping through some of the pages at this point, says, mm, okay, right. So, uh, this is going to take me a little bit of time. So, how about... Party? I'm going to do... Hmm? Party? Uh, I mean, if you want, but there's probably other things you could do with your time that might be a little bit more appreciated. Uh, I don't think they like you that much here. At which point, Peleus speaks up. Some of us appreciate them. She seems to accept what the Forge Master tells her. Well, then maybe they'll be willing to let you help them out while I figure these things out. I promise I will come back here in two days. I should have at least one of these things translated by then. Can't be that hard. I you say she was hot. Uh, she is. She's fairly attractive. Yes. Uh, you you know, depends on whether or not you're into halflings, but she's cute. Oh, halflings. Ugh. <laughs> Never mind. I'm not interested. In her. <laughs> <laughs> Were you going to say something, uh, Honos? Yeah, I I say, I. Uh... I think our best I think our best course of action and one that best fits everyone's interests is to go after those people who were abducted. I I I feel very much like I myself nor just a, nor just a small group of us could affect a large battle in any way. Do we have any idea of where I start looking? I'm hoping to find a clue for that in here. Oh, I, I have a, I have a feeling if I were just to wander, I'd, I'd walk into something nasty. Um, I have luck like that. I would like to look at Mendardus and ask him if he still has those mushrooms on hand that I asked for him to help me with, and if you also have some tumo. I would like to gather them up and take them to the potions master. Do I have mushrooms? Uh, I remember that there were some clippings taken of mycelium. Uh, I don't know who carried them. I know I have three. I were you the only one to take some clippings? No, I know Mendardus helped me, and then some were gathered by somebody else. I'm Did not he sure help you gather Mo them? Or Mendardus. I remember helping, but I don't remember keeping any. I think you might be the only one with the mushrooms. I only have three. And I know three came from one, and then there was another three. Well, certainly you can go and, uh, you can go and check them out with the, the herbalist. Uh, so what... I think this is a, a pretty decent point to call it for the evening, fellas. Just because it's getting on in the hours. 
so I wouldn't even be back from work right now. This is not what? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's past twelve. I know. I've worked until one or twelve thirty before. Well, I'm. I'm just gonna admit, I'm. I'm starting to get a little sleepy, and it's kind of hard keeping track of all the threads that I'm trying to tie into this point in the story. So, I'll. I'd say let's call it from for here for tonight, and then we can pick it back up. Um, I might be able to do next Saturday if everybody is available. 